Good afternoon, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I would like to introduce myself. I am Din Deng Due, uh, one of the professors from University of Computer Study, Yangon, and I am also in charge of Cybersecurity Research Lab. I would like to present the project. Title is Smart, Secure, Survival, and Sustainable Agriculture Platform Project Using Solar Energy, IoT, AI and blockchain technology. That's why I said 4S Agriculture Platform Project. This is the collaboration university and department. Uh, even in my university, the collaboration team will be integrated from faculty of information science, uh, artificial intelligence lab from faculty of computer science, Computer vision and visualization lab from Faculty of Computer Science, UCS Wine, and also Kin Mongkut University of Technology, North Bangkok, Thailand. This is our current team of my proposed project. So I would like to explain the, how I got this idea to propose the project. In developing country, there are lack of strong infrastructure especially in rural area. They have no underground cable connection for stable internet connectivity. And also the available of electricity. So they, uh, in such area, they have only relied on mobile phone, which can use uh, via satellite and solar energy to use their daily life. For example, here tribe people living over the range of mountain in the rural area of Kintong, uh, we say Jaindo, but everybody know in the world previous time it is Kinto. So it is situated in Eastern Shan State, Myanmar, near the border area of Myanmar and Thailand. And also the traditional farming practices are inefficient and cannot reach to qualified market due to lack of resource and information. So that's why uh, I want to initiate this result project to develop smart, secure, survival, and sustainable agriculture platform, which I call for as agriculture platform for rural farmers using, as I mentioned about, solar energy, power, internet of things, sensors, artificial intelligence technology, and blockchain technology. So, uh, if you want to know the hit, look at hit right people in you can go the uh, link under my slide. Thank you. So I would like to explain about forest agriculture platform. So uh, it will consist of IoT science sensor devices. Uh, from the left side, you can see that uh, for that IoT devices, sensor and uh, sensor are connected to uh, maybe it will, you can see in my next slide, uh, connected with uh, some IoT device like Arduino and via Arduino, it is connected to Raspberry Pi and such kind of device. We need energy, but uh, I previously mentioned that uh, such kind of people who live in hill tribe or rural area, they, they, they don't have uh, like energy given from the government. So they, they have to survive using solar energy. That's why I consider the design. And after that, uh, the data collected from the sensor are sent to Raspberry Pi and uh, from via this, it was sent to uh, the cloud uh, via the secure channel. For that secure channel, uh, we will implement some secure me mechanism I will explain later and the right part where we exit in the cloud. That data API, business logic, web application, mobile application, and also for uh, AI and machine learning model, and also blockchain technology. This is the overview. And I would like to explain the phases of implementation. In my proposal, uh, we consider five phases. Phase one is, uh, uh, even uh, in my master schedule, uh, include seven items. Actually, it has also uh, only have five phases. 
Uh, the first one in, in my master schedule is for getting approval and forming the project team to initiate this platform. And second is uh, initiation and setting up the infrastructure. In that case, we need to install IoT sensor devices powered by solar energy module and setting up the internet connectivity using GSNC module on Raspberry Pi controller. And second is uh, we need to uh, create sensor networking. It, it will connect various sensor to Raspberry Pi. Actually, we were used uh, in between. Uh, we were used Arduino device also. And also, we need to develop protocol for secure sensor data collection, and, and we were. Select a rural area for smart agriculture. So this is uh, what I mentioned before. When we make infrastructure setup, we need to install IoT sensor device powered by solar energy module. Uh, from this case, we will use uh, various sensor, swine moisture sensor, temperature and humidity sensor, water level sensor, wind speed sensor, rainfall sensor. And also that sensor device will be connected to Arduino device, maybe two or three we will use. And after that, that, did, uh, that will be connected to Raspberry Pi. And also that Raspberry Pi had, as I mentioned before, uh, for, for, for my example case, uh, for the heat tribe people, they don't have uh, internet connection. They, uh, thanks to satellite, they only access internet connection via GSM, that's why we, uh, in our model, we try to use GSM module to Raspberry Pi for internet connectivity. And this is uh, uh, the list of devices we need to use for OneNote, OneNote uh, to connect to the, uh, to, to test for that platform and to connect to the cloud. Uh, we will need solar panel. It should be uh, uh, at least uh, nearly 50 watt turbo, and also the battery we will need. And uh, also we need solar charge controller for turbo, and also we will need a regular a regulator for heating. Uh, with heating, it, it should be 3A and 5 volt. And also we will use wire moisture sensor. Uh, uh, and also, uh, we will use temperature and humidity sensor, water level sensor, or maybe ultrasonic uh, water level, uh, measurable sensor, wind speed sensor, rainfall sensor, and Arduino, Raspberry Pi, just a module, and uh, other general things that we need to set up for uh, OneNote uh, to implement this platform. So, the, uh, the right side is I just put the estimated price refer from Alibaba.com. Uh, you can check uh, for later. Thank you. And uh, this is also the phase uh, include in the phases of implementation for sensor networking. We need to uh, develop protocol for secure sensor data collection and for the data ascending between 
uh, each node to, to the cloud, we need secure connection. At that time, we will not use the existing uh, methodology and we are trying to implement ourselves for data encryption algorithm using uh, cyber blockchain. Actually, uh, this uh, research is already uh, ongoing research project at my cybersecurity research project. My student and colleague are, are trying now. Uh, this is, uh, I want to explain about cloud architecture. Uh, to deploy a cloud server, and uh, uh, as I mentioned before, we need to develop AI and machine learning model uh, that we collected the data from, from the sensor, and we need to uh, implement the control system. For example, auto irrigation system. Uh, in that case, we will need to use like uh, solenoid board uh, like that. Uh, and also, in order to use such kind of solar night board, we will also need the energy power for that. Uh, uh, to implement the web application and mobile application, uh, mobile application UI for user accessibility, uh, we were trying to implement dashboard for data collection from every node and also uh, upon this, uh, depend on the model we got from the AI and machine learning, and also, uh, we use uh, some uh, technical background. We, we were implement recommended system. Uh, in such case, uh, this is only example that we, we can use uh, for, for the recommended system is uh, collaborated filtering. Collaborated filtering is a technique uh, uh, who often, uh, which is often used in recommendation system, including crop recommendation, it identifies patterns and similarity between users for fee to make crop recommendation based on what has worked well for similar users for that fee. And, and also we need to establish the connection between sensor network and cloud server. And in that case, we need to send a message uh, uh, among them. Uh, in that time, we were trying to use the broker with secure mechanism. Uh, this is the... Uh, I just uh, mentioned about uh, what we need to do for a recommender system. We need data collection, we need to train a model, and then we will get the recommendation for that. This is for what we will do our experiment for feed testing. The selected location for the pilot project is the Crofi in our university campus, Yango, Myanmar. As you can see in the picture, or you can check from the uh, given link. Uh, this is my university link. That uh, there is a trophy between the uh, accommodation and university main building area. Uh, we always uh, plant uh, some kind of vegetable and fruit in that area. So we were trying in that area first. Uh, from the left side, you can see the uh, which we call French bean, French bean plants. Uh, this is the current situation that we uh, planting in that tree, but we do not implement that IoT devices, but we have already uh, arranged a place to implement this. And also, maybe uh, we can try uh, another uh, short-term vegetable for that. So I would like to tell the impact of our proposed project from the scientific and technology impact. Uh, it empower agriculture community with an IoT sensor network powered by solar energy, uh, which aim to gather critical environmental data from farms, such as swine properties, weather condition, and more. Uh, it can establish a secure data ecosystem ensuring that farmers have easy and transparent access to vital sensor data uh, to inform uh, decision making. Uh, it leveraged a band AI and ML model hosted in the cloud to provide actionable insight and recommendations based on sensor data, enabling farmers to enhance productivity and sustainability. And then uh, it can create an AI driven auto irrigation system that optimizes water usage according to the real time farm condition, thereby conserving water resources and improving crop yield. 
uh, it will implement a pilot program in selected rural area or developing country to assess the tangible benefit of the platform, measuring its positive impact on agriculture sustainability, water conservation, and local livelihood. And let me explain about associated and collaborative impact by harnessing the capability of resilient, secure, and sustainable agriculture platform. Farmer can significantly reduce toxic emission, and also the platform will facilitate similar communication between remote farmers. Uh, maybe we can implement in uh, also uh, our collaborative country. It can promote knowledge sharing and collaboration among agriculture community, which will lead to improved practice and increased productivity. Furthermore, the adoption of this technology empower rural residents with a tool for smart living and farming and enhance their overall equality of life while promoting sustainable agriculture project for long-term community well-being. Uh, this will be the output and our can of our proposed project. Uh, it, it will be we get uh, forest agriculture platform development and including solar power, IoT sensor, and where we can have AI and machine learning model for data analysis and in real world, we can use auto uh, irrigation system and recommended system. So the outcome will be improved agricultural practice as well as environmental impact, and also knowledge sharing and collaboration, and it can make pilot evaluation. So let me conclude my uh, presentation that uh, while the platform has potential to revolutionize sustainable smart agriculture, it has challenges of high initial cost, uh, cost but uh, we need to address this lack of infrastructure for, for the people who are living in rural area. That's why we can use the word equity. So uh, this forest agriculture platform will be uh, uh, innovative technology uh, to, to by using IoT sensor and drive uh, recommendation to improve farming method leading to increased crop yield and resource efficiency. And also, uh, it will capacitate the knowledge sharing and communication, as I mentioned before, and for the future, include integration of computer vision, uh, virtual or augmented reality-based advisory tool and blockchain, support a farmer, community, or, or microfinancing, if we can implement the blockchain with our own method. Uh, that's bring to the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor, for your presentation. Now it's the time to give the uh, uh, comments and uh, suggestions and questions from the floor. Please. Yeah, excuse me. I, I look at your presentation on the out, output outcome. Yes. Uh, the output is uh, auto irrigation. One of the output is auto irrigation system. Auto irrigation means, for example, we, we plant yeah. like chili plant. At the time, uh, the sensor will collect the uh, swine moisture level and the dryness of the swine and the growth of, of the, uh, based on that sensor data. Uh, or maybe because of the uh, threshold level of that, that moisture, Input uh, or this time we need to uh, water that in that case we were joined with solar night board to control the water and then in that case it will water the plant for example we were trying only a short term vegetable because we need to uh, implement some model collecting the from from we uh, from the data we collected from the sensor right so that's why um, we target. Uh, short term vegetable like 45 day French bean or chili plant like that. So, so your system only, only sends, your, your sensor only check the water, water data of the soil or you also check other ingredients of the soil because the soil may need yeah, yeah. uh, more phosphor or more phosphate or whatever, not only water. Yeah, NPK from soil moisture sensor. Right. Uh, like nitrogen, uh, phosphorus, or some potassium, like labor. Uh, oh, I see. So those yeah, yeah. NPK is given manually. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. And sorry for the communication with the cloud. Yeah. 
have you ever tried the the Starlink system, for example? Yeah, uh, we uh, in previous work we transformed IoT project that deployed with Docker application to upload that our web application to the cloud. Thank you. The time step. Thank you, Professor. Thank and you, please discuss uh, in the dinner time. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Now let me invite the next presenter, uh, Rodessa K. Casaro, uh, to present the title, Estimating Cloud Density to Detect Sparks Areas to Aid in Cloud Management. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Rodessa J. Cascaro, and I'm here to present our research study entitled Estimating Crowd Density to Detect Sparse Areas to Aid in Crowd Management. I have the privilege to represent our team from the College of Computer and Information Science from the Mapua Malayan Colleges Mindanao in Davao City, Philippines. The management of large crowds is a challenge that requires innovative solutions. Our team, consisting of Janelle Cassandra Uy, John Francis Puebla, Ian Miguel Anshan, are working hard in researching and developing a solution to address this pressing issue. While still being in the midst of COVID-19 pandemic, the safety and security of the citizens should always be paramount. In the context of mass gatherings, this becomes particularly significant. Crowd surges and stampede associated crush injuries and deaths are considered as one of the most major non-communicable public health hazards during a mass gathering event. At our place in Davao City, uh, an agency called Public Safety and Security Office has recognized the gravity of this issue. They have been taking, taking steps to enhance safety by requiring event organizers to submit security and safety plans. In line with this commitment, our research project seeks to contribute to the prevention of accidents during crowded events. We aim to enhance the quality and efficiency of video streams, providing clearer visual for analysis. Using our application, we'll be able to estimate crowd density and generate heat maps to detect dense and sparse areas. And more importantly, our application will also provide immediate visual and auditory alerts for areas that become excessively crowded. Then there will be a feature that will enable the organizers and security personnel to respond swiftly to potential problem, problem areas through our notification system. Please note that our project is still in the development stage. And these methods represent our approach in addressing the crowd management challenge. We start with the foundation of installing high-powered CCTV cameras in our target areas. This will provide us the visual data we need for analysis. And once we have the video feed, um, we will utilize OpenCV for image processing. Then the heart of our project lies in estimating crowd density that involves several elements such as employing YOLO V8 for human detection, uh, for precise uh, human detection within the crowd. We will use a grid-based approach to measure crowd density that is by uh, typically per square meter area. This provides a quantitative measure of crowd density. And then our analysis will, resu will result into a density map indicating dense and sparse regions. When a certain predefined thresholds for crowd density are exceeded, we will generate alerts. And these alerts will serve as early warnings to organizers and security personnel. And to ensure immediate action, we will implement a notification system to relay to relevant stakeholders real time. 
Um, currently, our algorithm is in the uh, where it's being trained to make accurate crowd density estimations. And we are um, using these two data sets for training. This are collection of crowd counting images and videos as well as high density crowd scenes. But just recently, uh, we figured out some inconsistencies on this. Um, we may be compelled to make our own data set because there's a parameter in YOLO V8 that needs one feature that's not um, readily available in these two data sets. In addition to this, uh, we've created system prototypes using Python since we implemented YOLO V8 in Python. And these prototypes will enable us to customize and optimize our system for specific conditions. And as we progress, it's essential to highlight where our testing and implementation will be, uh, where our academic institution, which is the Mapua Malayan Colleges Mindanao, will be our primary testing ground. Uh, it provides us a controlled environment to validate our system's performance. We have an area in our school where we hold uh, mass gathering and events. Um, we just thought it's going to be a good air environment to validate our per system's performance. And beyond that, we are excited to bring this solution to a broader community and if you are allowed, to the barangays of Davao City. We actually immersed in a few barangays and found out what they needed. Um, this research could have several scientific and te technological in, uh, impacts. We may be able to contribute to the scientific understanding of crowd management and safety. Um, YOLO V8 can be used to address real world problems because of its um, scalability now. The algorithm is very fast. Uh, it may also lead to a better understanding of crowd behavior analysis. This study can also generate valuable data and insights that researchers can use to make data-driven decisions in the context of event planning, emergency response, and urban development, as well as uh, our research may foster collaboration between computer vision experts and other experts in the field of urban planning and public safety. Um, in the te technological aspect, implementing this research in a real world scenario could enable uh, real time monitoring of crowd density and sparse areas. Then automation in crowd management and safety can reduce the reliance on manual human intervention, thus reducing human error. Again, as I mentioned earlier, YOLO V8 suggests scalability allowing this to be deployed in various scenarios real time. The identification of sparse areas within crowds can improve safety measures. And lastly, across the main applications. The developed technology may have applications beyond crowd management such as monitoring um, public spaces and optimizing layouts perhaps. As to the societal and collaborative impacts of this study, by improving crowd management and safety, this research can have a direct and positive impact during large gatherings and events. Uh, especially, uh, it may help reduce the risk of accidents and stampedes, reduce congestion as um, attendees at events and in human in urban environments may be, uh, the congestion may be reduced. The research can contribute also to emergency response efficiency, especially in crowd density estimation, uh, as it can aid emergency responders in allocating resources more efficiently. Uh, improved urban planning and data-driven decision making. As to the collaborative impacts, interdisciplinary collaboration can lead to more holistic solutions and a better understanding on the complexity of this topic. Industry integration may also be 
uh, led by this um, research studies and knowledge sharing, of course, collaborative research and partnerships with perhaps government agencies and some NGOs uh, for sharing knowledge and best practices, policy and regulation development, and of course, community engagement. Um, the probable outcomes of our projects are these. We anticipate the development of a robust crowd density estimation model or framework powered by YOLO V8, which can be used in various and different crowd management scenarios. A data set for, or data sets, we aim to provide a high quality data sets for public use also, for sharing uh, uh, that will support other researchers who are also on this field. Uh, desktop application, we, our project will result to a user-friendly desktop application, and if need be, we may extend this as a mobile application. Then, to ensure the effectiveness of our technology, we plan to create a comprehensive training material and a manual. Then, this is the, uh, what we aimed for, a collaboration partnership with the local government unit in Davao City and other local organizations. Uh, we aim to partner with them to integrate our technology into urban planning and public safety initiatives. And we also anticipate publication of at least two journal articles uh, which we will share our research found findings and methodologies. In conclusion, our research study aims to develop an application that will estimate crowd density and generate heat maps to detect dense and sparse areas utilizing YOLO V8 uh, generate density map indicating crowded or dense and sparse areas, give out alerts and notification. A few takeaways are uh, scientific advancement, of course, uh, technological innovation because we're using YOLO V8 now. It promises to enhance automation and real-time monitoring. Societal benefits as, as uh, discussed earlier. Collaboration is what we are aiming for today and some probable outcomes such as robust model, public data set, um, desktop or mobile application training materials, partnerships, along with the publication of valuable journal articles. Um, thank you for listening. Have a good day. Thank you for your presentation. Now we have time for the questions and uh, comments. Any questions or comments or suggestions, please, from the floor? Okay. Yes, please. Very interesting about crowd, you see. Uh, one of the main, one of the very famous crowd incident in the world is Mina accident in 2015, where thousands and thousands of people died at Mina accidents. Uh, I, I, I'm, I think in, uh, in Muslim countries was uh, get a pro better problem because of the Mina incident. In Indonesia, in Indonesia, we have a big problem because of that, because many people died there. Now, my, my question is very simple. In, is your crowd system... Now, now, the Mina accident is caused not only by the crowd, but also the movement of the crowds. Now, my question is, uh, do your, are, are you, uh, your system also can also detect crowd movement or just... Uh, uh, check uh, or just detect only the crowd? At the moment, sir, we only want to detect the crowd first. Uh, the movement will be with the uh, officers or the event organizers. Uh, we plan to just give out alerts and notifications for them to check and monitor and, uh, you know, uh, traffic the crowd. All right. Yeah, thank you, because movement is very worrying. Yes, you know? actually... Uh, YOLO V8 can do something like that also, but we haven't explored yet. Any more questions, please?
Uh, okay, that's interesting as well because I was I'm doing something similar but different in a perspective. But I mean, one of the main concern with crowd manage, I mean, crowd monitoring is usually is to do with how you're going to deploy it, how you're going to address the privacy issues here. So privacy any, issues. Yeah, because you need consent, right? When you want to deploy this, and I saw on your slide as well, you say subject to permissions. Yes. Yeah. So how how are you going to address that if you're going to do this? Actually, uh, we've already immersed into barangays, and um, I think there's. Uh, it's what I believe. I think it's not a problem since they're open to it. However, um, the CCTV cameras, their CC, every barangay has CCTV, CCTV cameras already. So I believe privacy is not a concern anymore. It's just that their application for that does not include um, this type of problem such as crowd density because their primary, primary um, objective of that CCTV is like a burglary and um, accidents. So yeah, I guess privacy is not a concern. The, the problem only is on the implementation because most barangays do not have the infrastructure. Any more questions? Yeah, I would like to know about how large the area that you plan to implement and how many um, units of the CCTV camera that you plan to use. Um, so far, since um, we tested on bird's eye view, I don't think we need too many. We need just one at the front and one at the back, or depending on uh, the placement where that view can just um, take all of the area. But it depends on the area that we'll be implementing it, uh, depending on the how large the barangay is. Uh, but we initially plan to put it someplace where mass gatherings and events happen, usually on gyms. So it's not too much, perhaps one at the corner and one the other one. Yes, we have uh, some minutes to have questions and comments. Uh, since you highlight infrastructure is your problem, right? And you actually say that you already have existing CCTV in the city, right? What is the possibility of integrating, I mean, using the images from the CCTV to your system then? Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's another thing. Because the CCTV that they have is old. <laughs> There's, uh, we, to reduce the cost, we plan to just integrate the system with what they already have. But unfortunately, what they have are old technology that we cannot even um, connect. So, uh, yeah, infrastructure is a problem. Maybe we can just, uh, uh, and by the way, they mentioned that since this uh, area is not the concern as of the moment, the problem would be the budget when uh, they need something to buy, like the high-powered CCTV cameras. Please. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, I, when we see the topic, I remember uh, maybe 10 years or 15 years ago, so a conference in Japan, a Japanese was proposing an uh, algorithm like this, and then uh, they detect the crowd and also give the the way, how they move, mm. either going to the right-hand side or mm. left-hand side or go forward. Mm -hmm. So in this um, proposal, you are 
you are trying to detect only or you are also uh, provide some algorithm like that to avoid the density? Um, for now, as I've mentioned earlier, we only plan to uh, detect the crowd density first. Uh, aside from the dense areas, the sparse ones too. So the algorithm for uh, the, yeah, after the flow... You, after you detect and then... Yeah, what, what we is? will just give alerts to the personnel so they can do the uh, monitoring of the crowd mm. manually. We haven't uh, thought of doing that yet. Okay. Oh, yeah. Thank you. But eventually, yeah, perhaps in the near future. So basically, uh, the purpose is uh, once we detect the dense area and then there are sparse areas too, we will give notification to the person in charge and tell the people perhaps there to scatter around the sparse areas manually. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank, thank you, you very presenter. much for your attention.